Have you ever felt like your liner looks like <laughs> Have you ever doubted yourself and thought that maybe my little chicken hands are not made for art? Do your parents want to disown you because your liner is so oh. bad? Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing the Wonder Liner. The liner that will do 70% of your work for you. This wonderful wonder liner will give you endless opportunities with your art. Surprise your friends and family with your new liner abilities. Become the life of every party and every family gathering. And make everyone say hello. Your parents will love you like never before. And your friends will think you're super duper cool. So what are you waiting for? The deal is flaming hot. Get your Wonder Liner right now and get a free rendering brush for free as well. Also, hello, fellow doors. Today we're talking liner. Disclaimer I'm not saying that this is the best way or the easiest or the most efficient, beautiful aesthetic. It's the way that I do my liner and it, it works for me. If you like the way I do my liner, then I will teach you how to do it my way and the techniques that I use. If you don't like the way my liner looks, then follow this tutorial isn't for you. Then there are also people that don't use liner. They're called painters, but we don't talk about them on this channel. I'm the opposite of that. I'm the opposite of a painter. I'm a fool. My liner is everything in my drawing. It literally does 70% of my work. It is what holds the drawing together. It is the core. Look at what happens when I just turn off the liner layer and only leave the color. Yeah, I'm not- I, ca I can't paint. <laughs> okay, let's get down to business. Let's get started with point number one, which is line variation in your liner. There are only two types of line variation, thickness and opacity. So thick or thin and light and dark. The brush you choose doesn't have to have size variation, but opacity variation is very important. I use the standard medium airbrush in Procreate. I use it for everything, like from start to finish. I use it for sketch, for line art, for coloring, I don't use any other brush. So your excuse of, oh, I don't know what brush to use or I don't have money to afford cool brush sets or something, doesn't work, no. Okay, so let me show you why opacity is so important. Especially if you're the one who is not very confident in your lines yet, or maybe you don't have the steadiest hand, or you usually chicken scratch. Please don't use all these fancy looking ink brushes or calligraphy brushes. Those are really hard to work with because they don't allow any room for mistake. The only person who could pull that off was Kim jong Gi, and man was a legend. Instead of using the ink brush that will take you like 20 tries to get one line right, I use my little airbrush so I can just slowly build up this line. And even if you chicken scratch a bit, it's very forgiving. Yeah! Darken and thicken your liner in the places where the lines connect. So for example, I am drawing this hand that is bended, and you can see that here where the hand is bending, there is a point where the lines cross. Your hand is a solid object, so don't cut off the line like that. Connect it, and I mean really make sure it is connected. Make it thicker, make it darker. Show the volume of the hand. Always keep in mind that all the objects you are drawing are three-dimensional, and you should think about them in a three-dimensional space. Another important point to keep in mind is that your liner is a part of your shading. It's not just lines. What these lines do is they indicate shadows. So when you're starting to do your liner, you should already know where your light source will be, where the light will be coming from. So when you start doing your liner, make sure that in the places where the light hits the surface, your lines are thinner and lighter. And on the opposite sides, where there is shadow, your lines should be thicker and darker. That is what will give volume to your liner. Also in places where you have the strongest shadows, like under the jawline, in the nostrils, 
here sometimes in the temples under your arm indicate those dark spots add a little contrast these are kind of the basic principles that you should follow with line weight and line opacity the next thing i want to talk about is line art color here you can see that my line art is never one color and it's definitely never black and your line art should also never be pure black as i have already said line art is your shading and naturally you would never get shadows that are that dark that they are black of course you can create an artificial lighting scenario where shadows would be black and if the object is black yeah you would see black shadows but in general in natural lighting you will not see black shadows it is just way too much contrast and it will look dirty it will look like your line art is kind of separate from your colors it will not look cohesive so what i do is i usually start off sketching and doing my line art with only one color i usually choose this like dark uh, red i just like this color for sketching and lining after i finished all my line art i put it on multiply mode and then i lay down my flat colors and for every flat color there is in your drawing you should put a different line art color so i take for example the flat color of this glove and i make this color a little darker then i alpha block my line art layer and i color my line art around this glove with this color simply if the object is green then I color the line art dark green. If the object is yellow, then I color the line art dark yellow or orange or brown. If the flat color is red, color the line art dark red. This makes the line art really blend in with the base colors and it all looks so cohesive. It looks so good. Next big thing that I want you to remember is that a brush is not everything. My airbrush alone would not be able to make even half of the work that I put into my liner. Along with my brush, I also use the smudge tool, the eraser, the lasso tool. It might sound complicated to get to use so many instruments all at the same time, but if you teach yourself to use those, trust me it will skyrocket your line art and it will also make your drawing process so much more fun and so much more efficient as well as you can see my line art is not serving only the sole purpose of the line art i also do a lot of my shading work in my line art i only do that on hair or clothes with a lot of folds in places where there are a lot of small like detailed shadows i prefer doing that in my line art layer because if you do it on top of your colors then it is really hard to keep the value balance the balance between the darkest points and the lightest points when you already have a color put underneath it is easier to get your values to look right if you're just doing it on a white canvas like it's basically almost the same thing as using a grayscale but i just do it a little bit differently so let me just walk you through my process and show you how exactly i use all of these tools so i have a rough sketch i lower the opacity of my rough sketch i create a layer on top and i start clarifying my lines i don't take my line art layer too seriously so i don't try to make every single stroke perfect because that's that's pointless you just make a stroke undo make a stroke undo i allow myself to be messy i allow myself to go over the same line a couple of times so i treat my line art layer like the second sketch layer but just a cleaner sketch that i later go and refine and then i go in with the eraser and give lines some again size variation making them thinner in some places and thicker in the others i think the point of the eraser is pretty clear next up is the smudge tool now the smudge tool is used by me a lot i love my strokes to be just like messy i don't like the mindset that like oh every stroke has to be perfect and even and clean i just usually go in and just roughly color like the top and the bottom eyelid the nose the lips 
So it looks something like that. And I go smudge, smudge, smudge. I make it look cleaner, make it look three-dimensional. Again, it's just easier for me to do on the line art layer because I can clearly see the values that I'm putting in. And why I do this smudge tool thing so much is because it allows me to get rid of this like really sharp outline. That's how I use the smudge tool. I use it where I don't want to see clear line definition. So the last thing is it is so convenient. You start drawing so much faster and so much more efficiently. Let me show you an example on a strand of hair. First of all, I always think of hair as three-dimensional structures. Think of it as if you were sculpting it out of clay, like in 3D, like in Blender or something. Or think about how the hair looks like on anime figurines. It consists of very defined, thick chunks. If you think of hair as a 3D object, then you can identify and select all the different planes of that object. This is one plane, this is another one, this is a front plane, this is a plane that is in shadow. I select a plane that I want to shape. First, I make my airbrush bigger and I go in and put in the big, big shadows just to show the overall volume. So I go from the biggest shadows to the smallest shadows. I smudge it a little bit, make it smaller, define some smaller shadows, again smudge them so it all looks smooth and then make the brush even smaller and get some more hair definition and that is how i do it plane by plane just keep in mind the value balance and also don't do the pillow shading for those who don't know pillow shading is when you shade along your outline and leave the lightest point in the middle so something like this which doesn't ever look good make sure you have spots where for example like here the lightest part of this plane is contrasted with the darkest part of this plane. You can tell where one plane ends and the other one begins. And using the lasso tool allows you to do just that, allows you to make this clear definition between the lightest point and the darkest point. Because that just looks good, that looks tasty. Let's summarize everything we've learned today, shall we? First, remember about line variation, light and dark, thick and thin. Second, color your liner to make it look cohesive. And third, don't expect a brush to do all the work for you. Use the tools at your disposal. If you like these tips, if you considered them helpful, then please like and subscribe. I will post way more tutorials like this or maybe talking videos as well. Uh, we'll see. You can check out my art on Instagram or I post it on YouTube Shorts daily. I think that's pretty much it. So, bye-bye. Um,